Joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man who's coming off a flying knee knockout this past Friday, LFA 79, Yusuf Salah. Yusuf, I uh, appreciate your time. You know, 2019 has been a, a, an interesting year for you. I, I think last time we were scheduled to talk, I think like literally we were like 30 minutes from the interview. Ed goes, hey, man, his fight's off. Uh, we don't know if your fight's going to happen, but you, you got the, this fight. When I went back and watched the fight, it was, and I wrote it down here, with three minutes and 58 seconds left in the first, you kind of throw a little bit of a flying knee to the face. Was uh-huh. that the setup that ultimately was the fight ending sequence? I mean, I, I kind of, uh, I saw him started with a lot of leg kicks. So I kind of saw his head dip. And I know he's a grappler, so I know he wanted like to kind of, I, I try to use my reach as much as possible. You know, that's, they, they said he's got long arms, just use him. But I saw his head keep zipping, keep zipping every time. So I was just like, hey, man, I'm just going to throw it. Whatever happens, it happens. I might get taken down. But, hey, I'm ready. I was like, I didn't care if I got taken down or whatever. And then he actually landed. So I was like, and I felt it midair. And I was like, oh, shit, this actually landed. <laughs> so that's why I pushed. And I was like, oh, fuck, the fight is over. And I'm like, so that's, I never had that feeling before, you know. So that was, uh, that was an exciting feeling. Yeah, you know, obviously that eight inch reach advantage that you had in the fight. I mean, I think we always kind of talk about that in, in the training room. Is that just something where, you know, Car- Coach Montori and everybody else there is kind of sitting there going, Yusuf, we, we got to use this reach. We got this big advantage. We got to make sure that we, we use it to our advantage. 100%. That's the, that's the main reason why we moved to 35. It's because I am a long, lengthy guy. You know, I'm like, I'm like an average person at 45. You know, I'm not like, uh, the best, biggest, tallest, you know, but I get away with being technical and uh, cardio, but that's, that's going to only take you so far, you know what I mean? But we want to be on, has a lot more advantage than a lot of these guys. And Mark, especially Mark Montoya is the main guy who keeps focusing on me every time screaming at me, use your goddamn reach. So I was like, I got you coach. I got you coach. I got you. I'll use it. So that's the main reason. I feel like Coach Montoya might be a little more vocal than that. Oh yeah, it's a, uh, it's a little, he's it, it, he's the boss as we call him. He's uh, we gotta you listen to him real quick. You know what I mean? He has that voice. Yeah, I, I would tell you, I was, I was talking to James Krause the other day, and I saw the video that Factory X had put out where he's giving the speech to the team where he says, "Don't be a bitch." Were you there for that? No, actually, I was in Morocco. But I listened to it like 3 a.m. in Morocco, and I listened to it on YouTube. So it was uh, actually motivated the shit out of me. I was like, I was like, let's go. You know, it's like, but he's right, man. It's it's all mental. You know, you're going in there. It's like, this is not this is not for the weak. You know, this is uh, this is a very brutal sport. If if you take it easy, it will bite you in the ass. It's like life. You know, you can't take life easy. You gotta you gotta be out there. So it's it's the same way, man. You gotta treat it the same way, same life, and the same as fighting. You mentioned about the move down to 35. What was the, the hardest part about getting the body down to 35, or was it not hard? I mean, it was not that bad at all. I have uh, Tyler Mitten is my nutritionist. He's, he's, been, uh, he's been amazing, man. I was like, he's always on the phone. He's always responding, quick to respond and all that. So it was uh, it was not a, a hard cut at all. I mean, weight cutting sucks in general. I mean, I would not recommend it to anybody, but it's uh, – it's a, it's it's pretty good for for the experience and journey of this, and I feel like it's more discipline and all that. Me going to thirty five instead of forty five. You know, when you have a, a a knockout the way you had a knockout, it's going to make the wave around you know Twitter and and Facebook and Instagram and, and all those types of things. But do you kind of feel that also the fact that's on UFC Fight Pass that it could escalate potentially where you could be in twenty twenty? I mean, that's my, to be honest, that's like a goal, you know, it's like us to get in 2020 to get into the UFC and all that, you know what I mean? It's not, it's, uh, I'm a kid with a dream, you know, and I, I will do anything for that dream, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't care if it's UFC fight pass, I don't care if it's local show, I don't care if my friend's video camera, I really don't care. And I was like, they'll find out who I am and they'll, they'll know me and they'll get me in, trust me. 
You mentioned about being in Morocco, um, where you're from. When you go back to Morocco, what what is the reaction that you know people that knew you younger and they see you now and and they see what you you've done with your life, what your career is? Is the is there any interest in reactions you get? Definitely, man. It's like I uh, like I. It's all these people like they be like they're so proud, you know. They're like, holy shit! Like I'm actually seeing a a Moroccan kid right in front of me representing our country in a whole different country you know what i mean so it's kind of it's 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 an amazing feeling you feel from this guys it's it's the best feeling in the world like i wouldn't i can't even explain to you how good it is you know what i mean it's like especially the family man the family just loves you they don't care if you fight or don't you know what i mean so that was that was the best thing just to see the culture back home and kind of experience it again because i left when i was young so it was it was a great feeling and i i needed that before this fight. So I'm glad I got that before this fight. Is it kind of weird in a way of kids looking up to you? Uh, it is, man. I have a sister and I have all that. So it's kind of, it's kind of very weird, but, uh, I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like, uh, I always been, a, uh, like was as coach say, like a leader. So I'm always like pushing people to be the best they can. So it, it, it is amazing though, to see that like. I, I actually can change a lot of people's life, not just mine. You know what I mean? What's your sister think about her, her brother being a fighter? Oh, my sister is the smartest one. So she's, she's the smartest one in the family. I'm just, uh, I'm just a fighter. I'm just, uh, I'm just a regular fighter. You know, she's, uh, she's the engineer in mind. She's the, I told her, stay there. You, 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 you're doing great. You, you don't need to, you don't need to watch me fight and none of this, but she supports me every time. You know, she's, uh, she's my little sister, man. Obviously, we're you know at the end of 2019, so I, I gotta imagine probably no fight here for you before the the calendar year is up. I mean, uh, maybe something crazy comes up, you get a short notice opportunity. But is there is there a time frame when you want your next fight to be? I mean, I talked to my manager. You know, Jason. He's he's crazy with those phone or phone calls, man. I really, I really don't don't matter to me. I told him I was like I'll be ready, but it's it's kind of looking like January or February right now. So it's like kind of take the year the year enjoy the holidays you know enjoy your family but i don't know though holidays is the most people get hurt you know what i mean so i don't know so i'm staying ready man i don't i really don't care i have uh, i have the best team in the world and uh i they always keep me ready no matter what well it's always kind of a weird time in ma because they always say you never want to do an event during thanksgiving so, you yeah. know, just because people are traveling and you can't get those ticket sales, then like, it, it seems like it's like December 15th to 18th. It's kind of like yep. that cut out of December because you really don't want to do an event like the week before Christmas or even the week after yep. Christmas. So it's kind of like, you, you kind of feel like, okay, I, I got about two or three weeks to be ready for a fight. If something's going to happen, is that, is that kind of the mindset of like, okay, I got to keep my weight kind of at this point. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, they're like, most of the fights, they cancel because of their weight, uh, their weight cuts. They'll be like, they've been enjoying that holiday too much. They've been doing that turkey and, the, and that ham, you know what I mean? So I was like, the coach always tells us, and, uh, and our, my manager as well, he's like, listen, holidays is the best days to get ready. It's always somebody gets hurt, you know what I mean? It's hurt. They don't want to fight because they're, I mean, I understand. I want to spend time with my family as well, you know what I mean? I was like, I love spending time with my family, get to eat whatever food I want, all desserts that I want, you know, and all that. But for me, at 35, I have to be way more disciplined. You know, I can't. It's not like 45. 45, I'm eating sushi, I'm eating dessert and this and that. But 35, we can't do that. I, I got to I gotta zone out, you know what I mean? I was like, this is mine, and this is what I'm going. But like I said, man, I'm always ready, and I listen to my coaches, my manager, and they know exactly what they they're doing they've been here for a while you know they've been in this game for a while so my job is to go out there and train and, and show the best skills i can show now, did you have a cheat meal after the fight was over hey gosh chocolate is my is my kryptonite i was like i can't i i brought, I brought a bunch of chocolate with me i spread it with brandon and all my teammates okay i, I'm, I think you told me about that before that you bring that you have just a but you buy a bunch of chocolate during training camp but and then I you bring, bring uh, it to the venue? Ferrero Rocher, the golden uh, balls. Yeah. And then I, that's my tradition. I got to spread it out between the guys and the coaches. I'm actually talking to Brand here in a little bit. So you go out and have this highlight reel knockout. 
he only needs 23 seconds. Now, are you kind of too battling like who had the better uh, better victory? Nah, man. I I I, I talked to everybody, man. That kid, that kid is another level, man. I, I love watching that kid. I love fighting in the same car as him. And I will, I will stand behind him, man. That kid is is amazing, man. Is uh, it, it's it's like the future. That that's what that's what I look up to and and see, you know. He's and training wise, it's like ridiculous, you know. He's he's the one who really gets gets it out of you. You think you you don't have mm-hmm. it. It gets that gangster out of you. So that's uh, that's really it was amazing to see. And I believed in him always. And as soon as he walked out, I was like, watch, he's gonna out school this kid. And then that's exactly what he did. Yeah, man, just 23 seconds get, gets a submission victory there. Just crazy just kind of how quick that all unfolded. Uh, it, oh, it, man. Is that, uh, is, that what, is that one of those things for you when you're you're looking at other fights, whether it's someone you're fighting, someone you know, whatnot, and, and you look at kind of how he got the finish, are you just like kind of looking at those little transitions that he did to ultimately get the armbar? I mean, I wish I was uh, I could be like that kid. <laughs> When it comes to jiu-jitsu, I mean, I, I, I got to say, I got to be real. I'm not going to be out here and be like, hey, man, I, my jiu-jitsu is there. I mean, I got some missions, but that fool, man, oh, my God. It's, uh, he's, like, he's like Eddie Bravo on a, on, a, on a different level when it comes to MMA, you know. And he got, he got recognized by Eddie Bravo. So, I mean, and that's one of my, uh, one of my teammates. So, it's kind of – I'm very proud and kind of to say that's like, you know, that's my teammate. You know, I train with that guy. I get ready for that fight with that guy. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's it's a beautiful thing and beautiful techniques to see and kind of bring you back. And you look at it, you like, holy shit, I gotta step my game up. You know, it's not this is there, there is levels to this, and it's 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 starting. Is that kind of like? I mean, this is a t- this is an individual sport. We know it is because it's you in there. But the team aspect is it kind of one of those like things that it it, it offers a little motivation of like, man, I, I gotta try to one up him a little bit in some way. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Always. Uh, before I walked out, I was like, I, I was talking to Eric Grant, who was one of the guys our teammates fought as well. I was like, because he always does these weird-ass submissions. I was like, listen, man, if you do this weird-ass submission, I got to top it now. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to top this. but And obviously, I got a knockout, but whatever. But I was like, it, there's always competition. There's always shit-talking. There's always, you know, it's teammates. If you don't shit-talk, you don't, you don't love each other. So, uh so we always, I mean, Brandon, I mean, you know, him. We're, we're always going to talk smack to him, but he's, he's one of the best, what's best flyweights in the world. So who's the best shit talker in Factory X then? Uh, well, a lot of people say me, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a shit talker, but I'm a shit talker at the gym. I'm, I'm not really not a shit talker at the, at the fights or anything, but I think this is the first time I, in, in a fight, I really, I really let my, uh, my emotion out there, you know, and I was like, ah, let's go. I'm ready. Let's go. But, uh, besides that, man, I don't, I really, I really don't care. You know, it's like, it's fight time. You know, it's, uh, it's you and him. You ever, you ever had a, you ever had an opponent shit talk you in the fight? No, I'm waiting for that day. (laughs) See, I, I, when James was telling me, he's like, man, that motivates me. He goes, I love it. Oh yeah. He goes, I I love it when they do it. I was, I was feeling like a, like a fearless. I was just going, let's go. I'm waiting for that day. Somebody talks back to me. I'm like, Ooh, uh, you, you ain't ready. And maybe, like, be, yeah. maybe, maybe that'll be the next fight. We'll have to wait and see uh, if oh, that man. is the case. Like, like crowd said, like crowd said, I'm that five Oh one. I'm on that ass. I'll tell you that I'm five Oh one. You better be ready. Cause I got, I got a whole 10 more minutes to beat your ass. And that's, uh, that's, that's, that's where I come in. That's, that's where my card you come in. Yeah, it's uh, but man, it was just a thrilling fight to see you go out there. Congratulations on the victory. Uh, that that's going to be on the highlight reel for for a very long time <laughs> when it comes to LFA, and I'm sure we're going to see uh, see that uh, maybe on a bigger show here in the very near future. Yusuf, man, I, as always, man, I appreciate the time. Of course, let me know that you can follow you on social media. Anybody else you want to shout out, man? Hey, man, thank you so much. Thank you for having me again, bro. I appreciate you, man. It's always great interviews with you. Ah, uh, man, I was like, you guys know me at the Moroccan Devil on Instagram. My name, Yusuf Zalal on Facebook, Twitter, Moroccan uh, underscore 45, Moroccan Devil underscore 45. I should switch it to 35. I haven't done that yet. I don't know why. But technically, I haven't made Bantamway yet. So I, I made the last very 140. So let's, uh, let's, I'll wait. I'll wait a little bit. I'll wait a little bit. Man, I want to thank everybody at uh, Factory X, man. All the coaches, you know, they, they're the one who, built us you know what i mean the the culture and everything so i can't i can't thank him enough and i gotta thank every everyone in my management team man they 
they working their butts off for us, man, and especially for me, man. They they out here hustling for me, so I can't thank them enough. You know what I mean? And then yeah, all my, all my sponsors, man. Kelsey from Massage, uh, Jordan Kurtz, Common Spina Gallery, always takes pictures for us, man. He always takes care of us. But yeah, man, everybody else on the team, my my wife, even my dog is in the back. Shout out to him. But <laughs> well, that's it, man. I appreciate you, dog. <laughs>